Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over the jumping mechanics and the game physics behind jumping in Pi Game. So let me just quickly show you what we have so far. So in the previous few videos, we added images. So the player is Mega Man and we added key inputs to move Mega Man around by pressing on the arrow keys. And we also added checks to make sure that Mega Man does not go past the game boundaries. Basically, Mega Man should not be able to go off the screen. So if I go to the left, you can see if I try to make Mega Man go more left, nothing will happen. And I can go up and to the right. All right, so that's the current state of our game. Now let's add support for jumping. And for jumping, we're going to have Mega Man jump when the player presses on the up arrow key. Currently, if we press on the up arrow key, Mega Man is just going to go upwards. So let's replace that with jumping. All right, so for jumping, the first thing we need is a velocity. And a velocity is the change in position over time. So here I'm going to do player velocity y and set it to negative 10. So this is a negative number because when we are jumping, we're going in the negative y direction. And then in our player class, we're going to do self dot velocity y and just default this to zero. And then within our game loop, we're going to change the key inputs. So we're going to get rid of arrow down. And that is because we will not be pressing on the down arrow key for the player in our platformer game. Now in some platformer games, when you press the down arrow key, you are ducking. But in the case of Mega Man, we're not going to do anything. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then for the up arrow key, instead of having Mega Man move up, we're going to change the velocity y to be negative 10. So player dot velocity y will be player velocity y, which is the negative 10 value. Now, if I save and run a program, nothing will happen if we press the up arrow key because we are not applying this velocity y for the player. So as I mentioned earlier, velocity is the change in position over time. And just like how we're drawing every frame, I'm going to create a move function that will be called every frame. So here I'll do move. And again, velocity is the change in position over time. So I'll do player dot y and I'll add player dot velocity y. And then I'm going to call the move function right before we draw. So let's save and run the program. And now if I press the up arrow key, Mega Man is just going to go up forever. And that is because we do not have any form of gravity. So let's go over how the game physics works. So to change the y position over time, we need a velocity y. And if we set it to, let's say, negative 6, then in the first frame, the y position will go up by negative 6. And then in the second frame, it goes up by negative 6 again. And in the third frame, it goes up by negative 6 again. So it's going up by negative 6 pixels over time forever. And that is what we have so far. Now what we need is gravity. So velocity is the change in position over time. And gravity is actually a form of acceleration which is the change in velocity over time. So currently, if we don't have gravity, then the velocity never changes. So we get something like this. Now, let's say we have gravity. And in this case, gravity should be in the opposite direction of the velocity. So it should be going down, which is in the positive y direction. So I'm going to make it positive 2 for this example. So if we apply gravity to the velocity, then in the first frame, we'll have negative 6. And then we add 2 to the velocity. So now in the next frame, we have negative 4. And then we have negative 2 and then 0. After that, velocity y will be positive. So we have positive 2, which is now going downwards. And then we add 2 more to the velocity. So now it's positive 4, positive 6, positive 8, and so on. So that's how gravity works. Basically, you are slowing down the velocity over time enough until we stop moving in the air and then we go back down. So let's add gravity. In this case, I'm going to make gravity equal to 0.5. And over here, where we apply velocity for the y position, we are going to apply the gravity to the velocity first. All right, let's save and run the program. 
And as you can see, Mega Man appeared and then gravity just pushed Mega Man down. And the reason for that is, since we start with velocity y of 0 by default, gravity is still being applied to the velocity y, so it's going to be from 0, then 0 0.5, then 1, then 1.5, to and so on. So it's constantly adding 0.5 to the velocity y in our move function. And since we don't have anything to fall onto, the player is going to fall continuously forever. Now I could create some platforms, but for now what I'm going to do is define where the floor is. So here I'm just going to do floor y and set it to game height times 3 over 4. So we're just going to make this the limit, similar to how we made the bottom portion of the game window the limit for the game boundaries. We're going to make this the limit for the gravity if player.y, and remember, player.y refers to the top part of the rectangle, and we want the bottom part, so to get from top to bottom, we add player.height. So if player.y plus player.height, which is the bottom part of the player, which is Mega Man's feet. If we go past the floor, then I'm going to have Mega Man stay on the floor. So player.y is going to be floor y. However, remember, player.y refers to the top part. We want to make sure that the bottom part is touching the floor. So we subtract player.height. All right, now let's save and run the program. Okay, so you can see Mega Man was falling and now Mega Man is touching the floor. And this floor is where y is equal to the game height times 3 over 4. And then I can press the up arrow key to jump. And you can see Mega Man jumps up and then gravity is being applied to the velocity y which forces Mega Man back down. So we have Mega Man jumping. Now there's one thing that we need to fix and that is Mega Man can jump multiple times in the air. So I can press the up arrow key multiple times. Like so and Mega Man will stay in the air. Now this could be useful if you're designing a game like Flappy Bird or Kirby, but since we are making a Mega Man platformer game, Mega Man should not be able to jump in the air. So to fix that, all we need is a boolean. So over here, I'm going to do self.jumping, and for now, I'll set it to false. And if we jump, then we'll do player.jumping, and set it to true. And if we fall back on the floor, then player.jumping will set it to false. And when we are jumping, we want to make a check. So if we press on the up arrow key to jump, we need to make sure that Mega Man is not already jumping. So I'm going to do and not player dot jumping. All right, now let's save and run the program. So we have Mega Man over here, and now if I try to jump, you can see Mega Man is jumping, and I cannot jump in the air anymore. So Mega Man can only jump once its feet are touching the ground. All right, so we have Mega Man jumping. Now I want to add some updates to the images so that when we're jumping, we actually see Mega Man jumping instead of this same sprite being used. And of course, we want to change Mega Man to face the direction he is walking in. So if I go to the right and move left, you can see Mega Man should switch directions. So we actually have some images for that. So I have Mega Man right, and Mega Man left, and Mega Man left jump, and Mega Man right jump. So let's load all of these images. Now, we are going to be loading a lot of images throughout this tutorial, and every time we load an image, we need to scale the image. And this is going to be two lines of code for every image that we load. So I'm going to create a function that can handle all this work for us. So over here, I'm going to create a function, load image. And we're going to take in the image name. And in this case, I'm just going to assume that all the images are in the same folder. So they're all in the images folder. So I'm just going to pass in the image name. And for the second parameter, I'm going to pass in a tuple for the width and height that we're scaling to. So here I'm going to create another parameter called scale and I'll set it to none by default because not all images will need to be scaled. For example, this background image. So I'm going to do image pygame.image.load 
os.path.join images folder and image name. And I'm going to do if scale is not none, image is equal to pygame.transform.scale image scale. And then let's return the image. So let's start by replacing the background image. So over here, I'm going to delete this and just call it load image and pass in background.png. And let's do the same for player image right. So this will be load image. And this is the scale. All right. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we have all the images loaded. Now let's load the other images. So we're going to use very similar names. So player image left and Mega Man left. And in the player class, I'm going to add another field. So self dot direction, and I'm going to set it to right by default. And within our game loop, when we process the key inputs, if we make the player go left, I'm going to do player dot direction and set it to left. And similarly, I'll do player dot direction and set it to right. And within our player class, we'll have the player class handle all the image updating. So update image. So here I'm going to do if self dot direction is equal to right self dot image is equal to player image right elif self dot direction is equal to left self dot image will be player image left. Okay, so this is going to update the image based on the direction Mega Man is facing in. And we need to call this function. And we'll call it inside our draw function since this is related to drawing. And we'll do it right before we draw the player image. So I'll do player dot update image. All right, let's save and run the program. So by default, we are facing right. And now I'm going to move left, right, and then left, and then right. Okay, now the next thing we need is the jumping image. So let's go ahead and do that. And I need to load the images for jumping. So I'll do player image jump right, and I'll load image. And the file is called Mega Man right jump. And notice that the dimensions are not the same as the static image where Mega Man is standing still. You can see the dimensions are 210 by 240 for Mega Man right, but Mega Man jump right is 260 by 300. So when we scale the image down, we need to scale it accordingly to the image size. So over here, I'm going to add player jump width and set it to 52 and player jump height, and I'll set it to 60. So now back to loading the image. The image name is Mega Man right jump dot PNG. And we'll scale it to player jump width and player jump height. And I'm going to copy and paste this set over here and change this to left and over here to left as well. Now in our update images, I'm going to make a check if self dot jumping and I'm going to copy and paste this in here. And instead of player image right, we'll have player image jump right and player image jump left. And then we'll add an else statement here. Now there's one more thing that we need to do, and that is we need to update the player rectangle width and height accordingly. Because when we scale it over here, this only applies to the image itself. It doesn't apply to the player rectangle. And this rectangle is important because we're going to use this same rectangle to check for collisions. So if the width and height is changing, then we might miss some calculations when detecting collisions. So here I'm going to do self.width and set it to player jump width self dot height and set it to player jump height and over here we'll do self dot width to be player width and self dot height to be player height all right let's save and run the program so i'm moving to the right moving to the left i jump right and i jump left okay 
So you can see Mega Man will change image based on the direction it's facing as well as whether it's jumping or not. Alright, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you understand how the game mechanics works for jumping and changing the image based on the action the player is performing. In the next video, we're going to do something similar to gravity except in the X direction. And that is, we are going to apply friction for when Mega Man moves horizontally. Alright, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more Python game programming tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.